Welcome to today's Manchester United news and transfer news. In this video, we'll discuss the new 100,000 seater stadium being considered. Basaka is in advanced talks with West Ham. Man United agree a five year contract with Masrawi. Ineos is showing more ambition in the transfer market. Midfield updates. Maguire stay in. All of this in a packed update that will bring you right up to date with all the latest Manchester United news and transfer news. Before we get into it, though, please smash a like on the video. And let's jump straight into it. So let's kick off with the stadium plan. So um, news came out yesterday, firstly from James Docker in the Telegraph, saying that Manchester United are leaning towards the creation of a new 100,000 capacity stadium that could cost more than £2 billion and take six years to complete. However, they will not make a final decision until the end of the year following full consultation with supporters. The Mirror kind of um, said that Manchester United see the LA's um, SoFi Stadium as a blueprint for their own vision of Old Trafford and the regeneration of the surrounding area. That was the ground that we just played against Arsenal with at the weekend, which did look impressive, um, to say the least. So what do we think about that? How do you feel about the new stadium? Let me know in the comments. How do you feel about, you know, potentially moving away from Old Trafford? It's a really difficult situation because obviously Old Trafford, so many memories, so many you know, moments that you can't kind of take away. But again, on the flip side, if you can't renovate it properly and you can't expand on it and you've got the opportunity to build a £100,000 seat of stadium, which will be, you know, obviously fantastic by the sounds of, of the model that they're going for, you know, do, do we need to modernise ourselves, I suppose, is the other way of looking at it. But what it does show for me, either way, is that any OS are showing a massive, massive ambitions with United. New board, new recruitment set up, new contract for Ten Hag, new training facilities. And they are really pushing to to do something with Old Trafford, whether that is build a new stadium next door to Old Trafford. Um, that's what it seems like they're they're kind of pushing for. Or obviously if if depending on the fans kind of opinion, it's nice that they are list gonna listen to the fans and kind of gauge the mood and the feeling around it, um, potentially renovate Old Trafford. So any also massive, massive kind of start, I think, so far. Obviously, we are going to have bumps in the road and we do need to see the long-term kind of vision for United. We need to see how it plays out. But they're definitely, definitely like Sir Jim's not sitting on his hands. He has come in like a like a bull in a china shop, just saying effectively kind of we're going to get all this done. And I think they're doing it as quick as they can as well, which is which is really impressive. But let me know how you feel about the stadium situation in the comments below. So let's start with um let's start with Melissa Reddy. So she did an interview yesterday on the United Sand saying that Manchester United aren't repeating the same mistakes of waiting for a player to be sold before thinking of potential incomings that we've seen in the previous regime. There's a lot more ambition. Man United do, are doing their due diligence with a number of players. So when they raise funds to make more signings, they've already got deals in place to wrap up. And that you know, I always think if you think back to last season, right, when we had the opportunity to sell McTominay at the end of the window because Fulham wanted him as a replacement because they were going to sell Paulinho to Bayern, get McTominay in as a replacement. And United didn't do it because, one, it was a bit late in the transfer window, but also there wasn't any replacements lined up for McTominay in the eventuality that someone did want to sell him. And I kind of think that's what Melissa Reddy's saying. And if you think about all the rumours and all the noise and everything that's happening with United, that is effectively how they're kind of doing it because we've got Delit lined up for if or um if when Lindelof goes, which could happen this week. We've got right backs lined up for if Wan Bissaka goes. We've got midfielders lined up for if somebody else goes. So they're lining up all these deals. And I think it could be one of two things with Ineos. They're either doing it sensibly because if we if we sign Delit and then you try to sell Lindelof, Lindelof doesn't have much value anyway. He's only worth a few of like 10 million quid maybe because he's got a year left on his contract and he's 30 years old, right? But if you then bought Delit, you're going to get clubs are going to be like, well, we know you want to sell him and you have to sell him, so we're going to offer you 4 million quid. And so you devalue your players. So I think you any also kind of lining things up where they're like, right, okay, well, now we've got a deal agreed for us. Bissaka, we're going to go from Razwari and kind of doing it in tandem almost, which... You know, it's hardly groundbreaking stuff that, for me, it just highlights how shit we've been over the last few years in terms of transfers where we've 
wasted a lot of time trying to sell somebody and then we're scrambling around looking for replacements because there's been no no kind of direction no plan no vision of how we're going to kind of do things and um but yeah massively impressed again going back to what i said before i'm kind of impressed with with the way we're doing things i know it's slowed down a little bit but there are things going on behind the scenes and i do think we can move quickly on deals and i think this week potentially could be a good one when it comes to come to comes to transfers but let me know what you think about all of that in the comments and i've just kind of mentioned one of the players there so Florian Plettenberg has said Bayern and Manchester United in, in direct and positive talks about um, Masrawi, with United considering the deals for Delit and Masrawi two separate transactions. Currently, there are no plans to complete both transfers as a package. And so we'll go through Delit first. So Manchester United are also closing in on Masrawi. Delit remains an option, but the main target in defence is Branthwaite. United must raise funds through player sales to reach a fee with Everton, who are maintaining the asking price. So Jack Talbot who's fairly fairly um, reliable, is kind of thrown a bit of spanner in the works and so said that United are still interested in Branthwaite. And I've got a feeling as well, I know some of you in the comments um, have also kind of maintained that, that you feel that United are still potentially going to go in for Branthwaite. So that's definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, but the main update on Delit is that from Fabrizio Romano saying that Mateus Delit confirmed to Manchester United in recent days that he is still waiting to join them the agreement on personal terms between Delit and United is still valid. So that's what going back to what I was saying before. If Lindelof leaves, then potentially we've got the the deal already lined up with Delit. We just need to negotiate the the or finalize the negotiations with the fee. Um, the more likely signing that could happen at any moment is Masrawi. So um, the latest there is that obviously we need to sell Basaka when if and when Basaka goes. It looks like Masrawi is going to be the player to come in. So Fabrizio Romano again said that the agreement between Manchester United and Masrawi on personal terms is a five-year deal with an option for a further season. The same contract offered to Lenny Oro and Joshua Xerxes. So Romano, and, and I get the sense actually from a, from using the comments that Romano's kind of doing your heads in a little bit. Um, and, and I get that as well, but he is still a very, very credible journalist. One of the most credible journalists around. I, I kind of get your frustration in terms of there is a lot of content coming out from him and a lot of regurgitation of, of stories. Um, but still, still one of the most, if not the most credible journalist out there in world football. I think David Ornstein's kind of above him when it comes to um, specifically English football, but you know, he's, he's got the connections. So when he said that we've agreed personal terms, it's a five year contract with Masrari. You can pretty much take that as, as, as gospel almost that that's that's effectively what's going to happen um ben jacobs also confirmed it saying um masrawi is told by munich he wants to leave having agreed a five-year contract with manchester united now all of that obviously depends on wan bissaka going so the latest on him is that aaron wan is close and close to joining west ham said sam c who's a good source manchester united want at least 15 million pound for wan bissaka west ham value him at over 10 million a gap in valuation still but talks are progressing that was ben jacobs and then Sky Sports said that West Ham are now in advanced talks with Manchester United over the signing of Aaron Wambasaka. One source claims the clubs are close to an agreement. So that's one that could happen, I think, at any moment. I think we could get a here we go for Bissaka to West Ham and then the here we go from Masrawi to United. So that's the way. And that goes back to what Melissa Reddy was saying, where they've got all these kind of deals lined up. We just need to wait for the right moment or wait for the the negotiations to kind of go through. Um but yeah, let me know what you think. So it looks like Basaka out, Masrawi in. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, now let's move on to the midfield. Obviously, that's the other area of concern for me personally anyway, is what's going on with the midfield. So Adrian Rabio has rejected a contract offer from Liverpool because he wants to join Manchester United. That came from not the most credible source, I've got to be honest with you, Italian outlet. Um, I don't know. Take, take that one with a pinch of salt is what I'm going to say. It's weird that all of a sudden Rabio wants to join United when he's rejected us twice in the past. I find that a little bit strange. Um, yeah, but again, he's he's a name that keeps getting linked with us. Sky Sports have said that Sophie and Amrabat is a player Manchester United is still considering signing independent of other deals. So does that mean that that's still something that I think, I think Amrabat might be possible, you know. Again, there's more noise around Amrabat from more credible outlets than 
Adrian Rabiot, the Fafana news has kind of quietened down the last couple of days. So is the Zubamendi news. I think they were kind of players we were potentially looking at if we couldn't get a deal done for Ngati, who I'm going to mention in a second. Um, and then Jack Talbot said that there's a confidence that a deal for Ngati could be concluded further down the line, less than the initial 70 million euro asking price. Manuel Ngati remains a major target for Manchester United. Sophie and Amrabat is still a possible midfield target for Man United. Another target is Morton Hulmland, as well as Adrian Rabio of Juventus. So Jack Talbot basically name dropping every midfielder that we've been linked with over the last few weeks. Um, the biggest update, though, came from Fabrizio Romano, where he said that PSG could be open to a loan with an obligation to buy deal for Manuel Ngarte. The player is waiting to join Manchester United after reaching a, a after reaching a personal terms agreement with the club almost two weeks ago. So that's big news from Romano, effectively saying that. PSG would be open with a loan with an obligation to buy, not an option, not an obligation to buy, which, you know, if we're kind of, not, I don't want to say restricted financially, I think we've got money to spend. They're just being smarter with the money and they're not throwing it around frivolously because we want to try and get as many players in as we can this window. Um, that's how I think and what I personally feel about the um, the transfer window so far. So that's interesting because loan with the obligation to buy that's next season's kind of budget um it also in the opposite way to where united are lining up all these deals to for when players do leave i do think that we need to also push some players closer out of the door as well so what i mean by that is is casemiro for example probably doesn't want to leave united at the moment because he's looking around thinking well i'm guaranteed game time i'm not really you know he's not going to drop me for McTominay in midfield, which is probably, you know, probably right um, in that position anyway as the number six. Whereas if you did get Ngarte, then all of a sudden Casemiro drops down the pecking order and then he might be like, well, actually, maybe my game time is limited. And especially if you then bring in Amrabat or Rabio, and the same with McTominay, the same with Ericsson. Do you know what I mean? So there might be players that are on the fence about leaving at the moment. So, so in the opposite way to what I was saying before about the Lindelof and the Masrawi deal where we've got these deals lined up and we don't want to buy the players because they're, they're players that we definitely want to sell. Whereas I think there are others that we would accept deals for. They're just not pushing to leave. So this could be a way that we could maybe get some players in, in a way to almost force other players to, to look for alternatives. But let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, and then we've got a story regarding Ivan Tony. So despite other rumours, Manchester United currently does not plan to sign Ivan Tony. No co concrete talks or negotiations about a deal at this stage. United have other plans and have focused on other targets. That came from Florian Plettenberg, who's a credible source, effectively saying that um, we're not going to go for Tony. I don't think Tony was necessarily a player that we massively needed anyway. It would have been a nice to get rather than a need to get because obviously we've got Xerxes through the door. Um, and then the final kind of couple of stories I've got for you regarding um, outgoings. So let's start with Ericsson. Ericsson's done an interview saying, I have one year left. For, um, so for me, I'm a United player for at least the last year as well. And I haven't been told to leave or extensions. So in that sense, I have one year left on my contract. I feel good. My family is feeling good living in Manchester United. Living in Manchester, Manchester and United is a nice club. So there's a bit of an odd statement there, I think, from Ericsson. You know, is, is he kind of saying that he's staying? Who knows? But again, that goes back to what was mentioned before. You might need to force some of these players out by bringing the players in first, because if we did get Ngarte and Amrabat, when's Eriksen going to play? Because we've got Mount Mainu, Toby Collier coming through. I think he's going to get game time this season. Um, obviously, Bruno Fernandes to come back as well. Like, where is Eriksen actually going to get any minutes on the pitch if you get all those deals over the line? I, I think it's going to be very, very limited at best. So that might force then Eriksen to think, well, actually, maybe I do need to start looking at alternatives um, but let me know what you make about that and then Harry Maguire Melissa Reddy said that Harry Maguire will not be leaving Manchester United this summer um, and we've heard I think Maguire did an interview over the weekend effectively saying that he's been told that he's not going to leave which I don't necessarily have I don't have a big issue with that do I think he should be sold then yes um, I do do I think United would sell him if an offer came in yes but the reality is you know he's 31 years old He's on £190,000 a week. There's a year left on his contract, albeit he does have a plus one option, I think, um, Maguire still. So that is a problem we can push further down the line. Can be Could be useful in some games this season. And 
in terms of priorities, you need to get rid of Lindelof before you get rid of Maguire because Lindelof has only a year left on his contract. Um, so you can't be, you know, it, it is what it is with Maguire. There's not that much interest in him effectively. Um, and, and, and again, you've got to get your priorities right. So we've got to be realistic. We're not going to get rid of every single player that we want to get rid of in one window. I think already we've got rid of nine players. There's potentially another eight that could be going as well. I think that's pretty good for a first winter win or first summer window from, from any us being true for with you. Um, but let me know what you think about that in the comments. And I thought I'd just do a quick summary of where we're at so far. So in terms of reported exits, um, Bissaka has been linked with Inter, West Ham, Galatasaray. Obviously, West Ham are way farther ahead, looking very likely again. Could even have a here we go by the time you're watching this. Um, Lindelof is expected to go to Fenerbahce. That's one that's quite close to happening again. It could happen at any time. McTominay is still of interest of Galatasaray, Fulham and West Ham. There is a belief that McTominay, uh, that Fulham potentially going to come back in with another offer this week for McTominay. So it'll be interesting to see how that one develops. Jaden Sancho is liked by PSG, Dortmund and Juventus. Um, more recently, PSG are the the, the, ma the noisiest one. But again, we, we know that, um, that Juventus would like to take it, but they need to rely on sales and then I don't think Dortmund have got the cash so so that's one to keep an eye on Jaden Sancho Ericsson we've just mentioned is in is of interest from Ajax and, and Anderlecht Casemiro the noise around him has died down he's looking more likely to stay at the moment but there is interest from the Saudi Pro League and that could be one that happens later on in the window as I mentioned in yesterday's video Hannibal is um of interest possibly going to go on loan to Rangers and then Palestri is being linked with a move to Greece and Panathinaikos. So that's the kind of summary of the players that are potentially going to be leaving, I'll say. They're the more noisy ones anyway, the ones that are all from the most credible credible outlets. And then in terms of incomings, recently we've been linked with David Hanko, Sergio Regulon, Ferdi Cadioglu and Mitchell in terms of left-back. Hanko is looking like he's going to go to Atletico Madrid. Regulon, we've not really had any more stories on apart from Romano name dropping him in a video but he didn't really say that there was anything close to joining United. Ferdi I think we had a bid rejected for coming from reliable Turkish outlets but we've not really had anything again on that. It's looking likely Brighton might be making a bid for him so it'll be interesting to see how that develops and Mitchell the noise around that's gone quiet. So the noise around the left back has gone pretty quiet but obviously at the moment United are looking at the right back situation where we have been linked with Vanderson, Masrawi, Dumfries and Frimpong. Vanderson will be way too expensive. Frimpong, question marks, I think, over his position. Is he a right back, a right wing back, or a right winger? Um, Dumfries, I think, would only be likely if wan went to Inter Milan. There was talk of a swap deal or potentially us buying Dumfries and then buying Basaka. Masrawi is looking pretty much nailed on um, at the moment. In terms of centre-back, Branthwaite, Delit, Silver, and Chalibur are the names being heavily linked with. Obviously, we've brought you news today regarding Delit. The Branthwaite story is not going anywhere. Silver, I think, was more noise coming from the Portuguese. Chalaba's a potential one. I'd keep an eye on that. There's been a few more stories coming out over the last couple of days, not from the most credible sources. Um, around Trevor Chalaba could be available for £25 million. Centre midfield, Ngarty, Zubamende, Fafana, Amrabat, Rabio, and Hulman are the main names being linked. Obviously, Ngarty is the, the one that's further ahead. Zubamende, the noise has kind of gone quiet because... They're talking about his 60 million euro release clause for Fana. Again, gone quiet last couple of days. Amrabat, there's been quite a lot of noise around, possibly a loan with an obligation to buy, similar to Ngarty, the news I brought you today. Rabio seems like noise. Humlin's an interesting option. Um, but out of all of those, it's looking more likely it's going to be Ngarty. And then in the forward positions, Tony, Dominic Calvert Lewin, Simmons, and Chiesa are the main names that we've been kind of heavily linked with over the last few days. Obviously, Tony, I brought you news from Plettenberg saying we're not interested in him. Simmons look, looks like he's going to go to uh, RB Leipzig. Chiesa, I think, is more media or, or agent stories to try and generate interest in him. And Dominic Calvert Lewin, I think, would be a you know, I, I can't see United pushing for Dominic Calvert Lewin, to be honest with you. So, um, so that's you all up to date with the latest Manchester United news and transfer news. Please share your thoughts in the comments. I enjoy reading them. Don't forget to smash us a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will see you in the next one.